Oke. Okay. Alright. <coughs> hmm. I lock out everything of mine, so now I have to lock back in. That's called Equality Act. I think that's what I read in the book. One fish, two Okay. I think we're good. Let us begin. Shall we begin? I think I have it here. Uh, I get what I need up. Yeah, YouTube is not on because they locked me out and I don't remember my password to lock back in. <laughs> All right, uh, shall we begin? We gather in God's name and we ask for his blessing as we invoke the name of God. Remember that when the name of God being called, we invoke his name for worship, for praise, for thanksgiving, for glorify, and we ask for sin to be forgiven as well. Sinners being forgiven, the sick being healed, that heal all the broken in our life. So we begin. The name of the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God, as we gather here today again to learn about the most holy liturgy of the church, the Mass. As we continue into the climax of the Mass today with the word of institution, the same word that you say at the Last Supper, the word that transformed the bread and wine became the body and blood of your own. Help us to understand, to know, to love, and to experience that effects of your true presence in our life. Forgive us for the time that we have disrespect your true presence and give us the strength and the courage to proclaim it to the rest of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, today's Lesson number 12, lesson number 12. We will be, let me make it bit right, so that's way we can see better. Let me see, okay. Good, okay. We're gonna do two parts today. The first one is pretty simple. We're gonna do it quick, okay? The apacus is mean is the invocation. And the main one we're gonna do today is the word of the institution itself. That's where the focus is gonna be. The invocation is where the priest begin to put his hands on that after the holy, 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 which we beautifully enter into with great joys, and the priest, and you kneel down, the priest put his hands over the, no, not yet, he said, you are indeed holy, O oh Lord, the fount of our holiness. With his hands, John, right? <coughs> holding them a stand with his, and holding them a stand over, you see the word? He joined his hand and holding them. How did he join his hand and stand in them? That's mean like this. Not like this. Join his hand and stand it together. You see the word? He joins his hands. You know, if his if the word is not a standing, then the join is mean like this or like this. Right? But join his hand holding them a standing over the offering. You see how clearly it is? Says, 
Does mean the hair like this. Not this. Not separate, but join his hair. Make holy, therefore, this gift. The, the one the column on the left is the second Eucharistic prayer. The one on the right is the third Eucharistic prayer. I want to parallel it there for you. <coughs> Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit of them, them like the dew far. He joined his hands, met the sign of the cross over the bread. And the chalice together saying, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is called the invocation. Whereas a lot of Catholics grew up and misunderstood, a lot of them believe this is where Christ became part of where Christ came down and make it become the Holy Eucharist. Because they see the priest do this. Got it? But it is not. Well, it also says sending down your spirit, so I can see the confusion. Yes, but if you listen carefully, the endless, this is not a command. May, made holy therefore, by sending down your heart, so that they may become. That's a asking, not a command. When it deals with sacrament, as we learn in sacramental theology, it has to be a command. Jesus is a Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. You see what I'm trying to say? It's not a request, it's a command. You got it? I baptize you. I'm not like, may I baptize you in the name of the Father. So far, so good. So, if we listen carefully, they say, so that they may become, sound like a request. It not only sound like it is a request. And that's where a lot of misunderstanding. Even sister told me that when she went to theology in Vietnam, the priest even said it, the teacher. Well, and actually a few years ago when I taught this in Vietnamese on Facebook, I woke up, I, what, well, gotta be a few years ago, my office used to be over there. And I woke up with a lot of email and touch and sends me, like, Father, you are wrong. Because this is, when I said the word of institution, they say, you wrong, because here they said it, the older priests say it, and this one. I said, you serious? And I was panicked, because I said, shoot, I've been a priest for this long, and I've been not knowing this most important things. <laughs> you serious? So what I do, I call the priests who are my teacher in the seminary. I say, Father, is this the moment, or I take this all up, you and eat it? He said, how long have you been a priest? <laughs> Oh, that's even handed me even more, right? <laughs> Father Lee Gross, not his name. He, he went through three different ministers before he became a priest. I think he was a Pentecostal, a Methodist, and finally he became a priest, never married. So his liturgy is really... So he said, how long have you been a priest? And I remember I said, uh, 12 or 13 years. He said, and you still have that question? <laughs> I said I would kind of scare, but I gotta make me and myself feel confident. So I told him, I said, it was because your fault, but you wasn't making it clear when we was learning it. <laughs> <coughs> and he said, Martino, go back to the theology of the sacraments. It's gotta be a command. Was it a command? I said, no. And he said, did you get it? I say, yes, Father, I get it, but can I have one more question? He said, yes, you can have one more question. Tell me exactly where. He said, you just said you get it. I said, I just want to hear from your mouth. He said, Martino, take this all of you, not this one. This is called the invocation, not the institution. That's a, it. He said, when you study the liturgy, the invocation, not the word of institution and consecration. 
I understand there's a lot of people who said, nah, if you study theology of the East, the Eastern Catholics, the Roman, uh, you came from that and you, you, you have a lot of research on that as you attend the Eastern Catholics for a number of years. Uh, how do I go blank with your name? Leah. 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 <laughs> no. Okay. The Eastern Catholic theology doesn't develop. They, they, they look at a lot of theology as a mystery of faith. They lead you there, but they don't explain. They let you suck into, not suck, soak into that. Soak. It's been. Sponge. Yeah, sponge. You soak into that mystery of faith. They don't explain a lot. The Eastern theology of the Eastern Catholic churches or the Orthodox, they don't tell you the moment. They tell it start from this moment. Make holy, therefore this here. They tell you the starting point and the ending points. Got it? You understand the difference? For us, the Roman Catholic, the theology is more developed, and sometimes it is developed to the point that we come, <laughs> yeah. But the, in this case, it's good. It gives you the moment. But if you learn from the Eastern Catholic theology, they say it starts from make holy, therefore this gift. And it starts from there, and it's truly right. You invoke the power of the Holy Spirit, that's right. You ask the power of the Holy Spirit to come down to sanctify it, because the Holy Spirit that worked that make that become. It started bread, right? But if we look for the moment, then this is not the moment. When the priests say, May it become the body and blood. Because other than that, and I have seen one priest do this when I grew up. They drive, I met them, it's driving me nuts, but I didn't understand. I was one of the leaders in the youth group at the Vietnamese Eucharistic movement, very much in this country. And we always have training camp, three days, five days, seven days in that campsite. And Eucharistic is a center, because the name of the group is Eucharistic Movement. So we have adorations, we have mass, you know, that center. And one of the weird things in that one is that they never start the camp with the mass. They start the camp with an adoration. And that's why I just like, dude, you didn't have mass. Why do you have, how do you have the Eucharist to do adoration? But anyway, so normally, a sister was part of that. You know, many times the, the nuns or the priests will have to carry the Eucharist from home to there because you start out with adoration and you don't have mass yet. So one day I saw the priest took our host and he do that and he put it on for our adoration. I was about to pick up this one and throw in his face. Now, I was angry, I didn't understand. But you can't do that. That's not. It had to be within the Saturday of a mass. You can't do it outside. And doing this is a blessing. It's not the make it become the body and blood. Okay, but where does Eastern come from? Yeah, it's nice. It's a theology, right? It's beautiful. Actually, these words are not the uh, in the Bible. They're not. But so where do they come from? As we talk about the holy, the holy and the before. In the Jewish tradition, when the elders ask for the blessing, remember that? These are the same words that they normally do. As spoken earlier, ancient Jews have a prayer. The blessing over the cup included suppli supplication. You see, in a new translation, they use this word a lot. Supplication. Uh, that God would send the Messiah to Israel to restore the divided kingdom. So every before the meal, they pray and ask for God to send out the Messiah. They still do it to even today. Traditional Jews. They started way before the time of Jesus. We don't know where. But by the time of Jesus, every meal, the good Jews do And they still do it today. They still do it today. That's why the early Christians included in the Eucharistic prayer, a similar supplication, and that's what we just did. So we took that from the Judaism tradition, asking for the coming of the Messiah to restore the kingdom once lost. Like the ancient Jews who pleaded with God to send the Messiah, the priests at Mass petitions that the Messiah backslash king to be made presence again. This time, Jesus Christ, 
under the appearance of red and white. So, if we want to explain where is it in the Bible, these are not the Bible word. These are the tradition that we cut over. We took what's already there and we do that. They're the invocation. So, that's why if you, again, if it's not in the Bible, it can't be the sacrament. Got it? Because what is the definition of the sacrament? Who instituted it? Jesus Christ. If it's not in the Bible, then it's not there. Got it? So those are the those part, the invocation. Now you see that, right? It's very clear. It's not the word of institution. Let's go into that. That's where I have you divided into three. Only three gospel. Now that one we don't have to go into detail. Take this all of you. You heard that million times in your life. Catholics heard that to the point that they don't even care. Okay? But I want, that's where we want to take the focus on. Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be good enough for you. Take this all of you and drink from it. Okay? I put it there. Okay? From the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, and Mark. <coughs> John doesn't write the, the Last Supper institution, as you can see that. Only the first three Gospels wrote about it. John did. He skipped that whole part. Here's a funny thing. For John, the theology of the, the last moments was important. Do you know almost half of God's gospel, gospel begin, with the, begin with the Last Supper? Almost half of his gospel book. He wrote details everything except this one. So he did all that? Just yes, yes. John almost half, and I think about 43-45% of his gospel begins at the Last Supper. That's a lot, isn't it? You're talking about guy preaching for, what is it? For three years. And he had half of that. And for the last two days of Christ's life, he has the other half of the gospel. And a few days after reason from the dead. Almost half of John's gospel start at the Last Supper. For some reason, he did not write it. He wrote out probably every word, except like he had the dimension like me. He had that short-term memory that he cut the whole Last Supper out. <clears throat> you know that? You, you, I want you to give you a little background here. He just like, that will blend. <laughs> Maybe he was right next to Jesus, he was on the air or something like that, and he couldn't even remember that part. The part that Peter tell him, hey, ask the master. Remember that John was next to the master? Mm -hmm. So Peter said, ask, who's that man that betrayed? He even forgot that part. He didn't, didn't even put that in. That's funny, isn't it? But that's... John didn't write, but he had the whole discord explanation of that. Why? Why didn't he write it? <coughs> Many theologians explain by the time of John. You know, we wear red color at every apostle's feast, right? Any of them die, we wear red because that is the color of? Nope. Blood. The color of love. Oh, wow. The color of love. Okay? Color of love. Except John, because he was not modern. He was the only apostle who died at the old age. In the years, in the 80s, they say even, probably even early 90s, he died at a very old age. And by the time he wrote his gospel, he's about in his early 80s. By that time, they already did that. They already celebrate the, the, the Last Supper's meal. Did we study that from Paul wrote about it? When we study about the real present, Paul wrote about it. Everybody doing it. So they think that's the reason why John admitted it and gave the theology of it. Because it's unnecessary to write down what's, what's written by three authors and everybody already doing it. That's what they think. For whatever that is, let us focus on here. Okay? But just give you that. Now let's give us, this is a Passover. We all know where that came from, right? Take this all of you, and that way, that's where you three of you hold it. But I want to give you a little background. This Passover meal took the place as a memorial of the first Passover meal. Any of you still remember the first Passover? I know you do. Fill me in. 
what, what do they celebrate every year? They still do it today as a memorial of the first Passover meal. What do they do then? Yes. The first Passover meal was when uh, they were in Egypt. Yes. And Moses was going to lead them out. Okay. And they were instructed to slaughter a perfect animal, a lamb or a goat, and paint the lentils with the blood. So when the angel of death came through to kill the firstborn of every man and animal, so it was Passover that time. Okay. And they were to be clothed and ready, their sandals on, no unleavened bread. They had they were to eat bitter herbs and they were to the, the lamb that they killed, they had to consume all of it if there was a household that was too small, they would put two households together. If they couldn't consume all of it, it had to all be burned up. Nothing to do. Okay. We know that. We know thank you, Liam. The for the whole history of the Passover. Now the 12 apostles enter into this. We understand where it came from, right? Where do you want us to set the Passover meal? Go in there and do that. Came in there, they sat down and eat. The disciples have no clue what's about to be happen here. They didn't know, take this all off you. They, they, they have celebrated this Passover with Jesus three times, right? This is not the first time they did it. They hang around with him for three years, two times. This is the third year, or could be the fourth, whatever that is, how you count the three years. Basically, this is not their first over Passover meal with Jesus. They didn't celebrate that with Jesus. Didn't he say any of these at the previous one? No. This is only at the past. So I want you to set your mind. Not what you hear at mass. Take this off. You and no, I want you to set your mind into that last supper, so-called last supper, the Passover meal that you sit in there. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, nine of you make it twelve. Okay, sit in here with Jesus in that last over meal. You enter that with the mindset to commemorate, to do it in um, what you call that. What is the word I wrote in it? A memorial of the first Passover meal. You come in there, relieve the word memorial in Greek doesn't mean commemorate. It doesn't mean like we celebrate July 4. It's memorial in Greek means to relieve, make the past event present. Am I right, Liam? Okay, you study Greek and Hebrews and uh, I am only doing research, okay? I know that. Memorial in Greek means to relieve it, make the past event present. They just don't gather to commemorate. They gather to relieve, make that present in their life. And if you do today, today in a good faithful Jewish house, they still do that. They relieve that one. One of the young of the family would ask us, why do we do that? And the elder would stand up. We do it to, just like Liam said, to, mem to com not commemorate, to memorial. memorial of what the Lord have done for us. So that's exactly what the mindset of the apostle go, to relieve those things. And a few things we have to do, as you said, Liam, to sacrifice an unblemished lamb, Okay, to eat them all, and if the family is too small, you gather with another family, and you eat them. What happens if the two families still don't get it? The rest of the meat you have to burn. You eat the lamb, number two, you use the blood and mark the front of the door. They still do it today. So that family will be spared for the firstborn son from the Egypt struck at the ten black plagues. Okay? Years after year, from that time, Israel retold the story of the first Passover. And I said, Jews celebrate liturgically as a memorial, meaning to relieve, to make the past event present. To make it alive, not just for us to, to what you call that, uh, remembrance. remembrance. Yeah. No, 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 not to just to remember an event, but make the past event alive. Okay, and I said it not like July Four. We remember our independent days. Even the Catechism of the Catholic Church wrote about it. 
The past event will mysteriously make present to those celebrating the feast. The Catechism of the Catholic Church number 1363 said in the set of sacred scripture, the memorial is not merely the recollection of the but the proclamation of the mighty work brought by God for man in the liturgical celebration of this event. They become in a Present and real. Yes, Leah. Uh, at this time, when, when Christ says, you have to eat my body, if you go back to uh, Exodus, when uh, Moses, Aaron, and Aaron's sons were going through, there were no priests then. <coughs> Correct. There were no priests. So God had to show Moses how to make Aaron the high priest and his sons. So and they had to go through this elaborate, elaborate thing. And at the end, they made three sacrifices, a bull and a, a goat and a, and a lamb. And, okay. and, and with each one, the bull, they only burned up the fat because it was the smoke that was important to go up. Uh -huh. go like the, the, like the prayer yeah. go up. That's what <laughs> incense being used. Yeah. And then the goat, again, just the fat and certain portions of the leg, and the rest was burned outside the camp. Uh -huh. But the last leg, the lamb that they put on, Moses was instructed that Aaron and his sons had to eat of the meat because it says you must eat what atones you. And that's in Exodus. Well, when you come to... Um, Christ, now, he's saying, you must eat of my flesh. You must eat of my flesh. Why? Because now, Christ is the lamb. And he is what atones us. But they didn't understand. Not the comparison. And that's where we go into. The first Passover to the new eternal Passover. And we're going to get to the word of those things in a minute. You are exactly right. They didn't. They couldn't make that connection. Just like if you read the the uh, chapter six of John on the bread of life discourse, they couldn't make the connection of the bread of in the desert and the new bread of life. They told them, they told Jesus, right? Hey, we got that bread. Moses gave it to us. You know, we got that bread. This is nothing new. It seems like we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, we know. Moses gave us that, and Jesus made the distinction very clear, but they didn't get it. He said, well, first of all, let me be clear. It wasn't Moses who gave it to you. It's who gave it to you? My father, My father who gave it to you. But here's the most important difference here, Jesus said, okay? Those your ancestors ate that bread, then they all die. But if you eat this bread, they live forever. And they said, not your body, no. You see, he tried to make that parallel so they can understand, but they don't. Okay, but let's get back to him. The character is make it very clear, you see? Make a very certain way. It's a mystery of faith. No wonder why I'm going to jump a little ahead of myself, but I'm not explaining it here. What happened right after I do the consecration? And I say, the mystery of faith. Right, am I right? Right after I do the word of consecration, which we study next week. Okay, but I want to jump ahead and see, you see. So what just happened in that consecration is a mystery, but it's real. Can't explain, but it's real. Got it? Isn't that right? Right after I say the word of consecration, I say, the mystery of faith and you all proclaim it. See? So what just happened there is a mystery of faith. It's not, a, because if it's just a memorial in the way we think, or a commemoration, then it's no mystery. Then what mystery is it? Right? If I just commemorate a past event, like celebrate 50th anniversary 25, there's no mystery there. But how do I make that first wedding feast alive is a mystery. 
You, you got the difference? Okay, but a layer. I'm not going to jump ahead of myself. Let's go back to today. So, those are the things. So I want you to remember this. The Jewish tradition on the first Passover used the word memorial, being to relieve. We today do the same thing to relieve the sacrifice of Christ. Okay? Now I'm going to jump out of the list to teach you a little bit. And you know that I do sometimes, but it's related. <laughs> So I hope you remember. The question is, every time at Mass, what are we celebrating of Christ? We celebrated the, 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 and the what of Christ? The life, yes, Emma? You just jump from life to resurrection. That's no that. How do you have resurrection? The life, the passion, the death, and the you jump from the life to the resurrection. You, you love to skip the death. The life, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Isn't that what we celebrate? So here's come the question. You know I love straightforward answer, but there's something you just can't give a straightforward answer. 40 days of Lent, cow Sundays are not. No. no. So Sundays are not. The sixth Sunday during Lent no. are not. And you cow it exactly from Ash Wednesday to to, to basically the Holy Saturday before the Easter right. So my question is is or, or is the three day triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday a part of Lent? Yeah, <laughs> that's where that's where the yes and the no I have. You see, it's straight answer, but it's not a straight answer. Okay, we just said the forty day of Lent, including the Thursday, the Friday, and the Saturday. And now my question, as fact, is that three days part of Lent? We just say they did, and now we say no. Isn't that you see what I'm trying to say? It's Go. the culmination. What is that? What the heck does that word it's mean? But it's still Lent? Yes, yes. but it's, Lent has finished. Lent <laughs> but, that, but you're going to count that. You, uh, you see? So sometimes a straightforward answer doesn't give an answer. The answer is yes and no. It is counted as one of the 40 days of Lent because number 40 to make it, but actually it's not part of Lent. You see, you see the confusion? It's counted as one of the 40 days of Lent, but it's actually technically a, not of Lent. It's like Ash Wednesday. It's count as the day of Lent. But it's not. Because <laughs> Lent starts the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and I explain. I, I see some of that. Like, huh? I'm confused. If you look at the liturgy on that so-called triduum, is that what exactly what we celebrate at Mass every day? That three days, one Mass. One Mass, three days. Listen to this. What do you always start Mass with what? What do you end up Mass with? Did you get the blessing and do this at the end of the Holy Thursday's Mass? No. We don't bless you at the end. Because it continues. It, it, it just continues. continues. That's why I call it one day. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. now now let's go to the next one. Yeah. You see, we're going to, we're going to shed some light. Mm -hmm. And then on Good Friday, did the priest begin the service with? No. 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 He walked in, laying prostrate, and going to the opening prayer. Did you leave Good Friday with this? No. 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 Did you begin the... Holy Saturday visual with the no, no. no, you get the blessing at the end of that. Yeah. Isn't that? Yeah. You see? So it is part of land, but it is not in a sense. It's in a part of land in a way of counting as a day. Does that make sense? I try to make the simpler language here. It's part of land in a way of counting as one of the days. But it's not part of Lent as a liturgical celebration of Lent. Because we don't wear purple. Mm -hmm. Lent we wear purple, purple. violet. 
What do we wear that day? Friday, Holy Saturday, no, uh, Holy Thursday, we wear white. The Mass of the Last Supper, that's why I'm bringing here. I know it's a little outside, and I know you read the books, that's why I try to bring the book to the life, but at the same time to give you the knowledge beyond it. Other than that, we just sit here and do book study. You see, we're not just studying. On, Good Fr on Holy Thursday, we were white. From last of, Mass of the Last Supper. On Holy uh, Good Friday, we were red. And on Holy Thursday, of course, and Easter Sunday, we were white again. So it is 40 days. It is part of as a counting as a 40 days of Lent. But it is not part of Lent in the sense of a liturgical celebration. It's the three most climax days of the year. And that three days is what happened in that Mass every day when we celebrate. The life, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. Isn't that what we celebrate on three days? And that's why I'm preaching. I want people to go to that complete sense in order to get the feelings of it. At least once in their lifetime. That's what we celebrate every day here in the Mass. It's powerful. It's gorgeous. When I grew up, I have no clue. I just even hate it because, damn, it's gone on forever. <laughs> but I, I was watching uh, the Faith More little girl at the funeral mass, and she's so good. Yeah. But, but you think of how much will we like the child with that? The, the distractions, the, everything else that we like happen to us during the mass instead of just mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we, we get so. Yeah. That's why I sit in the front seat, because I get distracted very easy, so I always sit in the front seat. You, you, <laughs> you know why? The pre I think now I need to turn around, so I don't see any distraction. You know how much distraction I see from there now? And I understand why the priest in Vietnam never look at the people. He only look down. <laughs> I got where you are, I didn't know how to continue the mass. I would be like totally... <laughs> But isn't, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? The Old Testament, you bring it there, you bring the Mass, it is a three days. Now, so, so, so when I'm doing this teaching in Vietnamese, I couldn't find a word to express what I really meant. It's so hard, in, you know, because I don't learn it in Vietnamese. Like a memorial in Greek means to relieve, I go like, ah. And like, you know, the three-day tritium is part of land as a counting as a 40 days, but it's not part of land in a liturgical way. I can say that in English. I make up these words to explain to you. I couldn't make them up in Vietnamese. But that's nice. Isn't that enjoyable? So I don't intend to learn another language because that would put me in total confusion. Uh, I remember people used to ask, do you going to learn Latin and celebrate Mass? I say, yeah, you know, I'd like to, but I'd like to learn English and Vietnamese first. <laughs> <You know, like. laughs> okay, so it's a, we talk about a sacrifice, the, the parallel. Sacrifice the lamb, and this is the new lamb. I want you to hear the shock on the people, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, apostles' face. Do you think they have any clue what Jesus said? Yeah. They should have because they've known and been taught their whole life, the history of their people. This so is what the path of this word. Take this all of you and eat it. They were like, yeah. huh? Uh -huh. So it wasn't right. happened last year. Last year he didn't do it. Yeah. And then I turn around to the next one. I say, hey, John, did he do that the last two years? And they say, no. And everybody was like, huh? Why is he doing it now? And, 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 and. What happened before and after this? The story of Judas came in. Mm -hmm. Was it happened before or after? Anybody tell me. Pause, think about it. Not exactly what Jesus. Right after. Now that's even more confusion to it, isn't it? Right after this, Jesus dip it and gave it to him. Now, I want you to look at that theology. Now, 
call me liberal if you want. Some of them call me conservative. Even in his heart, he committed a mortal sin right there by betraying the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. He still got the Holy Eucharist. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you read... But for the wrong reason. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the wrong reason. So that brings to us. I'm not here to condemn or anything. But that brings to us. We, a lot of times, I myself, get the Eucharist for the wrong reason to receive it as a sign of condemnation. Not that God condemn us, but I myself condemn me by my own action. Not God. I don't mean when I use the word condemnation. I mean God punish and condemn. God doesn't do that. Are you saying that you, like if you took, you take communion with a mortal sin on your soul, is that what you mean? You're That's exactly what I mean. That's what I mean. And you, you drink the blood of the Son of Man. And basically, if you do that unworthily, you, what is the word he used? You bring, something to you your bring condemnation to yes. yourself. So this, when I use the word condemnation, I don't mean God condemn us. I mean we bring it on to ourselves. Well, so you can not, you can be in your confession, you can confess, and still go out and receive unworthy. Yes, because you do not think yeah, about what you're doing. Oh, so it, it's a pretty serious matter here. But I want to bring that up, okay, as a sign. As you know, we do a lot of debate. Do we give them communion or not? I tell them, after, and I do it with every parishioner. It doesn't have with political figure. I do it with parishioner. When I see something on an outward side. Now, I don't know what you commit sin privately. And I don't take what you confess and tell you. But if I see an outward side, I see Jerry sleep with five men, okay? You know, and, and she's open about it. She's open about it. After this Sunday when everybody, after this Sunday when people tell me I shouldn't do that, right, Jerry? I test the message, I talk about that on Sunday mass. And then Jerry's open about that. It's not like, you know, we sniff into her house and see who she's open the door to her to come in. But Jerry open about that. I date five men. You know, and I sleep with them. And then, of course, I, I talk to Jerry. That's become an open, a public thing, right? I talk to Jerry. But it's Jerry's choice. If she receiving that. But I want to explain to Jerry. Jerry, when you receive communion like that, not only it doesn't have the sanctifying grace on you, you actually bring condemnation to yourself. But it's your choice. I can't stop you from doing that. But my job, but the, the difference between I let you do it without explaining to you. That's the difference. And I think most of the radical left or the radical right don't seize it. Yes. Really? <laughs> you think it's interesting? I think it's exciting, lady. Yeah, but let me tell you, what's interesting is I'm reading through the Bible with Mike Schmitz, and today, yes. in, I think it's Numbers, there, or maybe it's a little bit, I can't remember, <coughs> they're talking about the Passover mm -hmm. or yesterday. From Exodus. From Exodus. But, and, and, no, but they're not in Exodus, they're talking about in a different book. But okay. Let me tell you, it's when it's when the Lord has given Moses that you're gonna it's the second Passover and he said you're gonna do this, this is gonna be a memorial. And there's two people that have been, two men say, What if we've touched a corpse and we're unclean? We want to we want to participate. And he says, Well then you can do it through the Lord, you can do it next month. But he says, if you are clean and you do not participate in this, you are condemning, you are, same thing, you're condemning yourself. So, my so it's not only that you receive unworthily, but, but you if you're worthy and, and you think you're not worthy, right. so that you don't receive in it, then you also be condemned as receiving unworthily. And see what, what Father Schmitz, he gives a commentary, and he's saying God is telling the Jewish people how they are supposed to worship him. Just like, G, you know, Jesus is telling us how to worship him and think about that because we as church people want a mass that suits our, or we want a church that suits our needs. And that's not what it's about. Right. Well, that's not the Jesus of it all the time. <laughs> <laughs>
Why interested? Why interested? You see, this word of institution, I don't go into that because you all know what it is. You know the whole three gospel wrote about it. But I want to call to a few of them. Uh, can we go back to Yes, yes, yes. Right, With this right over here? Now it says, and take this cup. Okay. That would have been more abhorrent to a Jew than when right. he had the flesh because of the dietary laws forbid Jews to drink, eat, or have anything mm -hmm. to do with blood except to sprinkle it on the altar. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So very good. Very good point. Thank you, Leah. Okay. I want to make sure our listener on face on live hear what you say. When Jesus say, take this cup and drink. It's a scandal. Yeah. It's a scandal. Probably his disciple would look at her and say, Master, don't you know that's no, a no-no? Yeah. It's a no-no. We Jews don't drink blood. <laughs> we sprinkle them. We put them on the door. We, we, we sprinkle them over sacrifices, over the land, over the... But hey, we ain't drinking it. Yeah, not the Vietnamese do, but not the, not the, blood sauces. yeah, yeah, the blood sauces, the Vietnam, the, the, the Mexicans do too, uh, but, but, but not the Jews, and we don't. This is a scandalous thing. It's a no, no, and Jesus did that. No wonder why John in the chapter 6, they said, you not. This is a no, no. We don't eat your flesh. And most certainly, we ain't gonna drink your blood. Eating your flesh, yeah, but it, you know what I mean? It, it's not a no, no, it's a bad thing. But drink your blood, no thanks. And the followers were saying, because he said this outside of, of the Seder Not only he didn't tell them that it called them back, but here's even, uh, I think this is the climax of that. He turned to the 12 and he said, you guys want to leave too? Right. Not only he didn't call them back, he challenged the leftover. I think because some of them probably was like, teacher, call them back. Teacher, explain to them. Master, don't let them go. You know, they was like that. And he was like, you believe that? Go. And they went, ah, oh, no, I'm not going. Oh, God, stay. Uh, you know what I mean? I think some of them probably just say, teacher, they leave in us in hundreds. Yeah. Okay, but anyway. The Christians were actually called by the Romans, especially the cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so. If you're a God they were called God yeah. Okay, I want to say a few more things before we conclude today. Original Passover, I use the word was, is a sacrifice because they still believe it today. Was for us, the first Passover, original, the first, was for us, but it still is for the Jews. Okay, so was, is a, sacri a, a sacrifice. It is a memorial of the original sacrifice. And a memorial means it's a lie. It's making a lie. In Luke, you will see, unlike Matthew and Mark, uh, when he took the bread, he said, we have given up for you. And if you look at the word given up in the Bible, it is a sacrifice. To be given up for someone, it is a sacrifice. The blood to be poured out you look at the Old Testament. See, he said, drink this blood, but this blood is to be poured out. He didn't say this blood is to be sprinkled. <laughs> it's to be poured. It's a sacrifice in the temple on the book of Leviticus. I have it there. But he said, this blood is not just the Old Testament of the sacrifice. The blood of the new covenant. I mark red the new covenant. 
So in order to understand the view, we have to know what the O, right? Other than that, the news make no sense. Okay, I said, oh, that is my new church. So where was your old one? <laughs> Am I right? So when Jesus said this is the new covenant, which is the old one? What do you think? What is the old covenant? Abraham. 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 And, uh, yeah, the, the old covenant was with Abraham. And then later on with Israel. Yes, but the original one, the Israel was to repeat what the the original, the old one, of with Abraham. Well, how did he he did the, the, the covenant with Abraham? Let's open Exodus for me. Let's read that one together. Chapter twenty four. Let's see the blood comparison of the Old Testament of, with Abraham. How? Was it sprinkle or the word poor? That's where I want you to look at, okay? Okay, let's look at Exodus chapter 24. Begin with verse, okay, let me, give me one second. Let me, okay, you don't have to do that. Let me see I can do this. Exodus uh, 20, what is it? 24. Catholics. Okay, one to have. Look it up here. I have it here for you. 24. Okay. Ratification of the covenant. Moses himself was told to come up to the Lord and Aaron. Is that what the one? Let me see what yeah, the one. Eight, it goes into the blood. Okay. Yeah. When Moses alone to come to the Lord, the order shall come. Okay. Look at number eight. Seven and eight. Take a look. Take the book of the covenant, which means bed. With what? With scripture. Okay. He read it out loud to the people who answer. All that the Lord has said, we will do. That's the promise, right? That's the promise. Now God say one thing, they promise one thing, not the two, not the two sides. Now let enter to the covenant. Then he took the blood and splashed it on the people. Sprinkled it on the people. Yep. Splashes. And this is the blood of the covenant. covenant which the Lord has made you. The blood of the old covenant. In the Last Supper, Jesus knew this is the new covenant. So it's no longer the blood of the lamb. It's now the blood of the lamb of God. That old covenant is now completed in the new covenant. In the new covenant. Not all is new. Okay, let me finish one more word. New and eternal. eternal. Which means there's no other covenant. Mm -hmm. Not the last covenant. Mm -hmm. Not there. When Jesus come the second time, or third time, or whatever that is, you know, with a, no, there will be no other covenant. Yes. This covenant, that's why Paul said that we believe Christ died once and for all. He will not die again. That's why sometimes I ask people, if Jesus come in the second time, he's going to ask them, yeah, I said, no. He will come the second time in glory to judge the living and the dead. Didn't we say that? And then we say that, but we didn't have a clue what we're saying. He come the second time to judge the living and the dead. He didn't come the second time to die for the living and the dead. No. The new and eternal, which means last, but live forever. Am I right? Is that what the word eternal? This is the last one, and it's go on until eternity. But the first one is still in effect. The second one is still in effect. The third one is still in effect. And that's and true. It doesn't destroy the all, but it brings the all to perfection. To perfection. To fulfillment. To perfection. It brings the all. It doesn't destroy the old covenant. It brings the old covenant to perfection. He says, I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Yep. And a lot of Protestants think that there's no reason to read the Old Testament because 
All those covenants are all yeah. over the covenant, yeah. and they're not. Yeah. They're still in effect. Right. No, nope, they 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 just being complete or fulfilled in a new one. Yeah. Now, I want to end with a quote from the good, great J.P. Two from the encyclical on the Church of the New Holy Eucharist. He wrote, as such, Christ's action at the Last Supper mysteriously anticipate his sacrifice on the cross. In the Passover meal, I want you to make part, JP to make this comparison. In the Passover meal we've been talking about, he talked about his blood. Jesus willingly offered his own body and blood for forgiveness of sin. All that was left for him is to carry out that sacrifice, to carry out that sacrifice in a bloody manner on the Holy Cross. At the Last Supper, he says it. And then, he made it to fulfillment on the cross. You see the comparison? That's what JP2 wrote. In the encyclical name, the Church of the Holy Eucharist, Ecclesia de Eucharistica, the encyclical of the Church of the Holy Eucharist. What Jesus said in the Last Supper, being complete in action at on Good Friday. Wow, quite uh, exciting journey. So far, we still have probably four or five more class to go. I said it from the beginning, I'm not rushing through it, and I hope you won't either. <laughs> Let's take it and, and, and soak ourselves into this mystery. I have made a decision that uh, because the theme of the whole diocese is, is looking for sacred moments, I will use my homily, the Rasa Black, to pick up different part of Mass to preach of as a moment. Yeah, we talk about the moment in your life, your regular life, that those are sacred and holy moment. What about the moment in Mass? Do you find any of those moments are sacred? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to use part of that. I'm probably going to do a few of them. You know, there's nothing. I, I don't go into details of all these things, but I picked out a few. And I think it's a hope to, to re-energize in the, the moments of exciting and the sacred moments where the bishop talks about to, 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 to appreciate more in Mass. So for some of you who's here or learning online, you may see some repeat in my homily. But I think it's necessary for the church as a whole. What do you think? I think it's necessary for the church as a whole. I think this should be added to the catechism that we use here to bring people into the church. This is what they need to know first, I believe. Okay. But anyway, any other questions or comments? That is our classes today. Uh, we, we have a few minutes. Let's see if you have any questions, any comments, or anything. Go ahead. I'm listening. You used the term a minute ago when you were talking about what the Jews did. You know, in Leviticus, you used the term splashing. Uh huh. And I, this is a little Bible that has footnotes, and this is interesting. This is the footnote, right? This is the footnote. Okay. It's called Blood of the Covenant. It says, splashing blood on the altar and on the people is an oath ceremony that ritualizes the blessings and curses of the Sinai covenant. The blood signifies the blessing of kinship and family, solidarity that bonds Yahweh and Israel together. At the same time, this is what was interesting, it signifies both the covenant partners should they violate its terms and prove unfaithful in the relationship. Good. And you know how they made covenants. Yep, that's where they I was made, about. That's where I am about to enter. Go I'm ahead, Liam. I'm, I'm going to sell you some property, and, and we're going to we're going to make a covenant between ourselves. And they would take and they would slaughter an animal, and they would half it, and they would lay it down. Oh, yeah. And then they would each one would walk through, and the the covenant was, may what has been done to this animal be done to you if you break the covenant. Where I'm about to bring it up. If you look at the covenant between Abraham and God, what not exactly what in Leviticus? 
<coughs> with Abraham and, 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 and Yahweh. They try to avoid to use that word, but I think it's needed to because it's what it is, what it is, uh, you know, on uh, Yahweh. Is when Abraham and Yahweh made the covenant, they cut the animal in half. And Abraham, on behalf of the people, on behalf of the people, the elders, remember we talked about last week, the elders, he walked in the between of that animal cut. And how did God do that? The Spirit of God walked right through. With the lamb. And with the lamb. Cut that. And that's why they didn't use, in the Old Testament, they never use, when it comes to the word covenant, they don't. Because you actually enter means walk through, not enter means to be part of. You know, today we use the word enter as a part of. Enter means you got it. So, but the main word they use in the Old Testament is not to sign the covenant, but to cut the covenant. Cut, literally cut the covenant. When we when we marry people in the church, if you look at. <coughs> the rooms, people sit on one side, and the bride's people sit on the other side. And what does the bride and groom do? They walk down the middle. Because <laughs> they're going to make a covenant with God. And it's the two families that are representing the animals, you know, in the covenant. Oh, you call the people the family animals? You are. Yeah. We just signed the Equality Act. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I hope that helped you to understand a bigger picture of that. But what happened there is, remember, the, the key one I want to remember you remember today is a memorial. Do this in memory of me. The memorial is not just repeat of a past event. It made the past event alive. Got it? And that's what it means. Today I understand the language is that. Here's a funny thing, I want to answer. I learned something last week when I'm teaching my first communion class. No. You was there. Were you there? No. Okay, you was there, Janice. I was talking about the meanings of the word change and how that is. In my first, this is second grader class here. Okay? Did you know? One of the kids, who actually was not up the part, but she just sit in the back and listen to me. And she raised her hand and she said, Do you know why in science they use Latin? Because the meanings of the word never change. Mm -hmm. That's true. Why? What the the meanings why? of the church never change. No wonder why the church and everybody have to go back to Latin. Because the meanings of the word doesn't change. When it's cut, it really means what it means. It doesn't mean what it means today. Like, let's take a word. For, for an example, as I said, when I first came to America 28 years ago, I learned the word gay means happy. I'm so gay right. today. Yeah. Right. Today if I say I'm so gay, the bishop may call me up and say, <laughs> Martina, we need to discuss about it. You see, so, but here, you see, that's what I learned from little kids. They said in science, they don't use, they use English as a translation, but the terms or the word are in Latin, because the meanings does not change. Does not revolt. Hey, you see, now I'm telling people that everybody say I'm smart. Yeah, I stole. I told you the two things I do the best. I stole things from people and make it better. <laughs> That's why they say when they when we when we get changes, they say we're trying to take it to the original Latin right. yeah. because we've lost so much of translation. Because of the translation. I'm telling you what, if you read that message Bible, I, it just I always if I find a verse like that, I have to go back. 